All right, if you have your Bibles, uh, go ahead and turn over to Ephesians. Uh, we're in chapter 6, and we're continuing our expositions as this book is really drawing to a close. A couple more weeks here, and we'll be done with Ephesians and moving into another uh, study. Uh, there's a hymn that's very familiar uh, to our church. It's one that's familiar to the whole Christian uh, body. And that is uh, the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And uh, it, this hymn is one that really uh, captures where we're at in our text today. When, when you consider what's in the lyrics, and I'm going to read one of the stanzas here in a moment. But the reality is, is we as believers, we're in a warfare. Uh, I don't think that oftentimes we, we realize that nor act uh, like that, I, I think that oftentimes we're kind of asleep in the fight, if you will. Uh, but we're in a warfare. As believers, we are God's soldiers. That's who we are. We've enlisted in the ranks of, of the Lord. And the call of the Lord Jesus is that we stand. Multiple times uh, in the portion of Scripture that we're dealing with, we've been told to stand. To stand firm, stand firm, stand firm, put on, take up the armor of God. And we're, we're told that. If you noticed your, your bulletin today, it was really cool. It's all right there. This is where we've been for the last several weeks, four weeks. We've been looking at the armor of God and our need to put on the armor of God. But the third stanza in this hymn Stand up for stand up for Jesus. Really, uh, it, it really sets down on what we're looking at today. The, the, it reads this way: Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in His strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on. With prayer, where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. And particularly when we look at this, this, this hymn, and we're told to take up the armor of God, we're to clothe ourselves in the armor of the Lord, there, there's a way to do that. And the way that we take it up, and how we take up the armor of God, the attitude with which we take up the armor of the, the Lord is essential. It's key that we do it with a right attitude, a right heart, or we'll end up, or we can end up, standing in our own strength, our own flesh, and ultimately we experience failure. We, we, don't, we, 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 we do not stand firm against Satan and his forces. When the, the attacks, when the fiery darts are shot at us, whether, rather than stand, we'll retreat, we'll give the ground, we'll take uh, wounds that we, we, we possibly could have deflected if we were, were, were embracing the battle with the right attitude. We're, we're taking up the armor of the Lord. The phrase in the hymn was each piece put on with what? With prayer. With prayer. What's the proper attitude? It's an attitude of prayer. It's an attitude of prayer. Now I want to say something right out of the gate, because I'm going to tell you what happens whenever a church in today's culture, church culture, talks about prayer, whenever that we address prayer together, everybody tends to go quiet, Tend to, tend to be convicted. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we fail here so miserably. So many of us. Some of you are great prayer warriors. And I know that. And God bless every one of you. But the reality is, as a body, as, as, a, as a church universal, and as a, the church corporately, even here, it is an area that, that needs to be strengthened. In, in all of our lives. And it's essential if we're going to stand. 
And there, there, there's an hour coming, if the Lord tarries, where we may be called upon to stand our ground. Right here in this little community of Delavan, in this little church called Prairie Bible. I believe we've been standing for 40 years on the truth of God's Word. And I believe part of that stand is based upon the fact we put on the armor in prayer. As a church, we pray. We, we, we've not uh, pushed that aside. It's important to us. We recognize that. But we fail individually. This section that we've been looking at, verses 10 through 20 of chapter 6, we've been operating under this theme or this proposition, if you will, and it's in your little outline there, that, that the believer, the church, corporately, the local bodies, must be prepared to stand firm against Satan and his forces. Why, why is that important? Because it is through our stand that the blessed God is revealed. When we can stand against forces of the magnitude of Satan himself and his emissaries who are fallen angels with, with great power as well, and we can stand against their attacks and hold our ground, it speaks to the reality of our God. He's manifested. He's revealed in that. But the question is, is how do we stand? How are we supposed to do this? How do we stand against Satan and his forces? Well, we've been looking at that, been answering that for the past several weeks. The first one, well, the first step in, in, in doing that was know the situation. We have to understand that we're in a warfare. If you don't know you're in a warfare, you're not going to, you're not going to be prepared to face the enemy. You're going to get blindsided. You're going to get bowled over. We need to wake up. We need to realize that we have a moment in time that's critical. You do. I do. And I'm not saying you got to get up and rattle your armor every morning and, and run out like with a war cry or whatever. But the reality is, is we should not be ignorant of what we're up against. That, that there is an enemy. And he's out to get us. I mean, he has a contract out on you because you are a follower of Jesus Christ. If he can destroy you through whatever means possible, he will do that. He will do that. But God's call for us is to stand firm. That we're supposed to stand firm. So we have to understand the situation the hymn said we're up against unnumbered foes. And we are. We don't know what, what the number is of those we're up against. The second one we looked at was know the provision. We spent two weeks on this. And this was actually the, the panoply, the full armor of God. All the armor of the Lord. And the key to this armor is know what it is. When you really look at the armor, it's just an analogy it's just an analogy. And he starts using that Roman imagery and he gave us all of these pieces. The belt of, of truth. The foundation is truth. The breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. The shield of faith. The sword of the Spirit. We, we have these pieces of the armor of God that, that are there. But you, you need to understand what they are. You need to understand what, why they're powerful. Why they are important. And that's what we tried to look at. Today, we move forward. And we look at the last thing that's necessary. And that is, is we need to know, the, or, or the believer must know the needed attitude. We must have the right attitude as we take up the armor of of God, as we take our stand for the Lord, we need to understand and, and have the proper attitude. Verses 18 through 20. And I'm going to go ahead and read this. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the, with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. 
that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. When we look at what's here, we're talking about that attitude of prayer. That's the needed attitude. That's what's here. Prayer is the closing theme of this wonderful letter of Ephesians. He ends by bringing us back to prayer. But it's interesting because we opened by focusing on every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies with which we have been blessed in the Lord. And as the letter closes now, we find ourselves brought to our knees in prayer. Now why is this? Well, the reason to me is pretty obvious what, what, what we're seeing here. In order to live the life that, that reveals our blessed God, embracing those spiritual blessings that belong to every one of us, praise God, because of our Lord Jesus Christ, by grace through faith in His finished work, we've been raised up, made alive, and seated in the heavenlies in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that means we, we're, supposed to, that's, it, we're supposed to stand in light of it. And he takes us to a different place now and he says, listen, if we want to do that, it's going to take prayer. It's going to take a right attitude. And I want to tell you what we're talking about here. We're talking about total dependency upon God. You cannot stand against Satan. You've probably tried. I've tried. And I fail miserably when I stand in my own flesh. I'm dependent upon God for my stand. He's given me what I need, but I'm dependent upon Him as I take it up. You get the gist? He's saying, each piece put on, as the hymn said, with what? With prayer. With an attitude of total dependency uh, from the Lord. I need God as I take up this armor and I take my stand. I'm dependent upon you. And I'm going to tell you when you start doing that, it says that James, draw near to the Lord and he'll draw near to you. Then you do what? Resist the devil and he'll flee. He cannot, he's not going to get your ground. God doesn't want us giving up the ground. He's provided what we need. And He says, be dependent on Me. As you take up what I've given you, and you embrace what, what's yours in Me, and it's, it's, it's yours, it, it belongs to each one of us, He said, you take it up with an attitude of prayer. A dependency upon Him. Prayer and the prayer meetings are an endangered Species, or I should say they're on the endangered list, if you will, in churches. They are. You may have a prayer group meeting in a church or whatever, and, and, and I praise God for that. But there were days, there were days in the history of the church where prayer meetings were every bit as full, and as full or even fuller than some of the worship times in churches. Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, would have as many as 700 people below the, the auditorium praying as he preached. It's little wonder he was the prince of preachers. Because the whole time he's preaching, he's got 700 people, children of God, praying that his word would come forth and burst upon hearts and people would be changed. And they were. They were. But today, it, it, it's, it, we've, we've, we've lost it. Go pick up the newspaper. Go to the church section. I've even done it in our church. And I've done it with our little Delavan Times. And you go through there and look and see what churches have prayer meetings. And then look at how many people show up at the ones where they do have them. It speaks to where we're at in our understanding of the importance of dependency upon God in all things. Every time I come together at a prayer meeting in this church, one of the most amazing things to me as I sit here, I'm humbled. 
literally. We go through the request, we, we share our request, we move through there, and we ask, uh, I, I'll take requests, I'll give the ones out that I know of in the body, we'll give our request, and then I sit down there and then we start praying. And people pray as God would move their heart there. Anybody can pray. And we wait on that person to pray. And then we say amen in our own hearts as we're praying with them. And then another person may pick up and take off with the other request. And we just keep praying. But you know what I see every time I bow my head and I look at that list? What I see every week, every time I sit down, is Lord, we need you so badly. We are so dependent upon you. If only we would realize that, that. That any kind of stand that counts for God, any kind of advancement that counts for God, has to be of the Lord. We're dependent upon Him for that stand. When we come to this text today, there are four alls we're going to look at. Four alls of the believer's prayer life that serve to spell out the attitude that's called for that we're to, we're to embrace uh, if we're going to accomplish God's purpose for us as His people individually and as a corporate body. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll look at the first all here. And that is this, we are to pray with all prayer, it says, all prayer and petition. Verse 18. And by the way, all the alls are in verse 18. They're in verse 18. And what follows is just uh, Paul's own request for himself, which serves as an example of the very last all that we'll look at here. But all prayer and petition. What do we, what do we mean here? Well, when we look at this, uh, we're, we're focusing the, the terminology that's used. All prayer and all petition uh, Pro, pro, uh, pro se, seutse is the, the prayer, and desis is the, the petition, and the, 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 the prayer, the prayer is a general uh, prayer or general request idea. And then the other one is, is petition, and it, and it has, addresses more specifics. But that, he's not saying, I want you to pray this way or that way at this point. What he's saying is, is when, we, when the, both these terms are being used here this way, it seems to indicate that God wants us in an attitude that involves all kinds of prayer. Every variety uh, of prayer. Uh, privately, publicly, silently, uh, audibly, prayers of thanksgiving, Prayers of specifics where we get very directed in our prayers. Prayers that are urgent when things are bad and we're driven to our knees because something horrible has happened like when our land was hit in 9-11 and churches across the whole uh, continent, our, our country, were, were crying out for prayer meetings and we have to have special prayer meetings. And I'm not, I'm not mocking that. I think it's, that's part of it. I'm going to say this. We were always praying for our country here. We've always done it. And it doesn't make us special. It just speaks to the fact we understand that we have an obligation to be in prayer for our country, our nation, our leaders, and that. But he's talking about all kinds of prayer. And, then, and, and I want to throw this in too. Prayers that are free of urgency. Just praying just to be with God. You know those moments driving down the road and it's just you and the Lord and you look out at creation and you just, or, or something beautiful, a bald eagle flies across and you get to see it and you're like, wow. And, and in your heart you just go, thank you, thank you, Lord. Just loving God. You know what I mean? Just not because I need anything. There's not really anything happening. I just want to talk to the Lord. I love you today. Thank you for loving me. Just spending time with Him. But He's talking about all kinds of prayer. We must be people of prayer. All prayers and petitions, He says. Now I'm going to say, ask this question, and I've already, already defined this. What is prayer? 
I, started, I taught a study, probably, it was in this church, so it hasn't been probably 18 years ago. It was on Wednesday nights. I did a whole series on prayer where we just, we looked at prayer. We, we went through the prayers of Paul, all the, all the New Testament prayers. We looked at prayer itself, what it is. And, and one of the challenges I, I gave to the people clear back then was, what is prayer? Define prayer. And I've already said what it is. It's an expression of total dependency upon God. You could say it a lot of ways, but what it boils down to is an acknowledgement as a, as a believer that I need you, Lord. I'm dependent upon you for everything I have. Every ble- I, I need you. I need you. And like I said, the list that you, you, you bring each week, every one of those, we go to him, and more often than not, we don't even know how to pray because oftentimes we pray for sick people, so we pray our heart because we really don't know because we're totally dependent on God in the situation. It may be God's will that Carol never recover in any fashion, but I pray my heart that if, if it is it, within God's will, that she'll be able to have the dialysis and have a quality of life. That's my heart. That's, that's our heart. But we want God's will. We want, we want Him glorified in, in, in the request. And we're supposed to come to Him in a dependent manner where we realize I need you, Lord, in all of these requests, and I can't do anything to, to change them personally, so I'm asking you. I'm, at, I'm dependent upon you. And we bring them to the Lord. We have to embrace our dependency if we're to have that right attitude. That's the first thing. First all. Second all. Pray at all times in the Spirit. And this, this really addresses the when and where of prayer. The when and where uh, of prayer. We're supposed to pray at all times in the Spirit. First, the when. In most of Paul's letters, he admonishes the believer, us, to discipline ourselves in, with a heart or, or to, to, to cultivate in our hearts a, a heart of continual prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. That's what he says, pray without ceasing. What, what's that mean? Well, there's no time, listen, there's no time when we do not need to pray. If he says pray without ceasing, ceasing then that means there is no time that we do not need to be in prayer. And then there's no time as well if we're told to pray without ceasing, it would also mean that there's no time that God isn't willing to hear us. Is that cool? He's willing to hear us. He's ready to listen to us. But we're supposed to pray at all times. Now what does that mean? Well, obviously it does not mean walking around like this. Or driving around, you know, or, or, or even audibly uh, uttering prayers like you're, you've gone out of your head and they're coming after you with the straight jackets because that's probably what they're going to do. Because they're going to think you're 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 just you you're gone out there. And by the way, you've probably had it happen. I have too. Whether you're, I've been praying in a car and had people looking at me like, "Who's he talking to?" You know what I mean? Or or singing in a the car. That they'll they'll grant you that because most people will do it. But you're sitting there having a conversation and they're looking over like, "There's nobody in." There. But but that's 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 part of it. The idea isn't isn't necessarily. Praying, verbally praying, it, what we're talking about is an, a continual and ongoing God consciousness. Where, where God is a part of every thought, every part of your day. And I'm not saying every thought. I shouldn't say that. You're going to think about your kids. You're going to think about this or whatever. But what, you, what I'm getting at is when I'm thankful... I, I, I let the Lord know. I'm thankful, God. I thank you. You know, where you're just walking around and you're in an attitude of prayer. You're, you're, you're just talking to the Lord. 
When I'm witnessing to a person, I'm sharing the gospel, I'm praying during the whole thing. I'm like, Lord, give, give wisdom here to where I don't blow this situation. And, I, and I, it's clear to where whether he rejects it or accepts it, it went out in a way that he understands the message, what, what's, what, what you've done. You know what I'm talking about, that attitude of prayer. When you're tempted, you know, you don't, you don't have to stop and pray. You, you, you're already in prayer. Lord, help me. You're, you're thinking it. You're, he's with you every part of the day. And I believe a lot of people here exist this way. I will say that. I mean, the, 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 by and large, there's a lot of folks in our church who are in an attitude of ongoing prayer. They just, they're just constantly thinking about the Lord as they go through their day. And that's what we're talking about here. To pray at all times, folks, what it equals is a life surrendered to God that, that maintains a constant communication with Him. It, it's not like I have to go through anything to turn on the, the, you know what I mean, to dial in the channel. Like there's not static on my radio because I'm already tuned in. That's what we're talking about. Your, your, your signal between you and the Lord is already established. And you're using that ongoingly as you go through, through the day. And as you, you uh, come, up, come through your life and move through your life. The where, and, and this kind of also is, is how, but really it's the where. Because the in speaks of sphere. And it's, it's in the spirit that we pray. This is the sphere and the power of our prayers. What makes us effective in prayer is, is praying in the Spirit of God. It, it's when we pray in the Spirit that we see answers to our prayers. And you say, well, why, why? <laughs> I want to see answers to prayers. Well, you want to see answers to prayers? Then we have to pray the will of God. That's praying in the Spirit of God. Romans, just flip over there. Romans chapter uh, 8, if you would. Romans 8. And uh, we'll talk about it in a moment here because this has been a controversial passage to some of our, our charismatic brothers would use this to establish grounds for, for tongues. And, and tongues is not... Anything, it doesn't have anything to do with this passage. But anyhow, 8, 26, and 27. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is praying in, in, the, in the Spirit here. This, this is what we're uh, looking at here. Uh, it, it, has not, it really has nothing to do with tongues, these groanings too deep for words. Uh, it has everything to do with praying the will of God. When we come with the right heart for God, like I said, on those lists where we, don't, we really just don't have a, a clue as how we ought to pray, that's when we say, Lord, Your will be done. And our, the Spirit of God, this is the coolest thing, people, when you think about it. He's got us covered. He's got us covered because He takes our heart and He prays our heart and conforms it to the very will of, of the Father. But as far as it depends, or as much as it depends on me and you, we should know what the will of the Father is in certain things. You want to see answers to your prayer? Then pray the Word of God. Know the Word of God. Know what He's doing. Know what His program is for today. What, what is His program, by the way? What's he doing right now? What is this? This is a grace age. They call it the church age. What's he doing? In Acts, he says, I'm going to send you out here and I'm going to call out a people for my name. So what's his program? He's saving people. 
If you don't have lost people you're praying for, you're missing a big chunk of the will of God. God's saving people. So it's right in His will to pray for the souls of people. When God, and by the way, think of this too. When your heart is burdened for somebody, where do you think that comes from? I'm a child of God, right? I'm born again. God wants me to know His will. If He prompts my heart to be burdened for a specific individual, then I have to believe God wants me to pray for this person's soul, and it's very possibly that God is wanting to do a work in that person's life. But we see God's answer prayer as we pray His will. Bud Morris, Doc Morris, he wrote that poem, The Scoop on Prayer. I didn't bring it. I wish I would have brought it, because it's such a cute... Prayer, but it teaches a very profound lesson. The little boy wanted to, he started praying. It's around Christmas time. He wants an elephant. He starts praying for an elephant, but the father, his father, says to him, Oh, no, you don't, we don't want an elephant. They make too big of a mess. And, and, and scooping up the, the poo poo and all this. And he said, Well, then I'll take a hippopotamus. And he kept, and then he kept going and he kept going. And, and as he communed with his father about his heart, and what he thought he wanted, eventually he said, you know what I really want? I think I would take a bike. And he got the bike. And the point is, is that he, he wanted, his heart was these things. He thought his heart was. But as he communed with God, God conforms your heart to his will. And you start asking, not for what Dan Larimore wants, not for what you want, but what does God want? What do you want, Lord? It's not getting my will done, but His will done on earth as it is in heaven. That's our heart. And that, that, that's where we need to be. The third all of prayer. This is the character of our prayers. With this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance with all perseverance and petition. Several points to get here. One, again, he says be on the, what? How did he word that? Be on the alert. Let me read it here. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert. Be on the alert. What does that mean to be on the alert? That means you're aware that you're in a battle. That we're in a fight. What the context is, we just took up the armor of God. We've been called to stand against the forces of Satan and, and Satan himself. And we need to be aware he is out there. We shouldn't be walking through this world with blinders on uh, to that reality. We need to understand. I'm going to tell you another thing about the, just in your, your, your relationships. Married people especially. Listen, if we could just get a hold of this and understand and be alert to the, the, the wiles of Satan, we, we wouldn't have near as much conflict in our marriage and in our relationships if we could just see the attacks for what they are. But we, 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 we refuse to be alert to these things, and it's a personal thing. And it's just Satan oftentimes just trying to get in and destroy your relationship, create conflict, and, and, and hardship within your marriage and in your family. And, and it's really just one of his attacks. We need to be alert to that stuff. We need to understand he's out there. This is a real situation. God wouldn't have spent this much time in the Word of God talking about this stuff, telling me what I need and why I need it, and what his expectations are, and this is what I provided, and this is the attitude you have to have, unless it was a situation we needed to fully embrace and understand. Be on the alert. That's what he's saying. Be alert to this. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's out there. And he's looking for one he can pounce on. And so we need to be alert to that. That's the first thing. There is a warfare and there's a need for prayer. Second, alertness as to when prayers are needed 
as to the attacks, as to the manner of our prayer. How are we supposed to pray? We need to be sharp and informed and attuned and alert to our situation and the need of focused prayer. We need to understand that. That's, that's what's here when he talks about perseverance and petition. Third, perseverance, devotion, discipline. It's about endurance. Prayer is not often easy. And you say, prayer is real easy. Well, then why aren't the prayer meetings full? And why don't we pray? Why don't we have... Why doesn't God get a portion of our day in prayer? Because it's not easy. You want to know why it's not easy? Because the evil one doesn't want you praying. He does not want us to pray. He does not want God's children talking to their father. At all. He's going to fill up your day with every time the church comes together for prayer with other activities, if he can, to keep you from communing with him, with the other people of God who have a same heart. He doesn't want that. At all. And you say, oh, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's a big... It is. <laughs> it is a big conspiracy. And he is in, 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 out there and he does do this stuff. He, he, he messes with this. He doesn't want us to be in prayer at all. But we have to be, have a heart to persevere in it. To endure. To not grow weary in the things of the Lord. With prayer being one of the critical matters. I, I, I hope and I pray that this church will never stop praying, even if there's two on a Wednesday night. Even if there's just one of us. If we, if we, we won't turn the heat on. <laughs> we'll meet in a little closet <laughs> with a blanket. I don't care. We should always have a prayer identity. I believe it should be a strong, a strong meeting. I believe our church, I believe churches would be far stronger if they, they expressed their dependency upon God. Together. Shouldn't even have to be motivated to come out on Wednesday night for a Bible study even. Not that I'm looking to get out of a Bible study. I love it. That's great. But we, we should be willing just to come together just to pray together. I need it. I'll be honest with you. I need it. <laughs> I need your prayers. More so than probably you could ever realize. I know my own heart. I know, my, I know the impact the world has on me. And I know you need my prayers. And I know the church needs each other. And we need to pray corporately for our identity as a fellowship. Who we are as a corporate body. And the advancement of, of, of this church, not for prairie's sake, but for the glory of God. Prayer, persevering. And then fourthly, with petition. This is specifics. This is specifics. He says here, if you look at it again, and he goes on, he says, Be on the alert with all perseverance and petition. Enduring and with petition for all the saints. We are to pray specifically. Now this is interesting for this reason. And, and one commentator, he captured this. I thought it was really great what he said. He said, God answers prayer in order to put His power on display. I love that. God answers prayer in order to put His power on display. And when we do not pray specifically... He cannot, he cannot answer specifically and thereby display His power. So when we pray specifically, and I'm going to tell you this, listen to a prayer of a child. It's never general. It is targeted like a laser beam on whatever it is that's on their mind at the moment. And it's detailed. I mean, I, I, I've, you've heard little children and how they pray. 
And, and they know exactly what they're asking Him for. And you know what? Oftentimes God answers it exactly like they prayed it. And what those, those kids, they love the Lord. Now I'm not trying to lift my, is she even in here, Sophia? She came down, I'm just going to tell you a little story about a prayer of my daughter and, and a specific prayer of my daughter. She came down one day, she's getting ready to go to camp. And one of her friends is going to camp. And this friend, had, this particular friend had spent the couple nights at the house and was going to go to camp. And she made a comment to her, her mother and I, and we were sitting around, and she said, I, I, Mom, Dad, I don't, think, I don't think she knows the Lord. I don't think she understands it. She thinks it's all about doing good works. And I said, well, you need to really be praying for her, that that God will help her to see that. And I, I'm really thankful you're talking. You know, we told her it's great you're talking to her. And if we can, we'll talk to her too. Well, they go to camp. They go to camp. And Sophie's out at camp. And she's praying for this girl's salvation. That's her prayer. And in her mind, God's going to save this little girl. That's In her mind, she's praying God's going to save this little girl. Sophie got sick, had to come home early from camp. I had to go pick her up. I asked her on the way home, how's this girl by name? I said, did she, did she come to Christ? And she said, I don't, I don't know, Dad, I don't know. And I'm en route going home. And George happened to be out there counseling. And he texted me and said that this little girl just walked down the aisle. And I told Sophie, I actually said, Sophie, look at this. And I held the phone up, and she looked at it, and the girl's name was there. And you know what she did? Immediately, she went into a praise service. Thank you, God. I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was just all straight back to the Lord. But she prayed specifically. And you've had it happen to you. I know you have. You've seen it with your kids. You've seen it in your own life. That when you're praying the will of God and you're being specific, God can manifest His power. And He makes it so known to you <laughs> that He did it. I've seen it when new believers turn around. How many of us, when we're brand new Christians, we ask something of God and all of a sudden He just does it. Like, I'm up here, it's real. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it is. But it's an affirmation. He wants us to pray this way. And he asks us to pray this way. But he, he, he says something here. Let, let, me, let me point this out uh, in the specifics because he says uh, something at the end. He says, with all perseverance and, and petition for all the, st the saints. And I, and I want to just say this, and, and we're going to go to the next one, because the last all is for all the saints. But in connection with that, I want to say this. The priority of our prayers not that we shouldn't pray for our car that's on the fritz and, and you know, or, or our house or, you know, and is, because we're dependent on God in those things too. So, I, and I'm not, and I really believe God wants to hear that as well. You know, I, I believe that. But in our hearts, as we approach God, we need to understand that there are things more important than this physical. And so the priority of our prayers as we pray ought to be the things of God and, and the spiritual side. But the spiritual fingers into our every day. So I get it. But I'm just saying we ought to care about the spiritual and that's what we're going to see here. Because he says we should be praying for all the saints. For all the saints. The focus of our prayers ought more often than not to be others. Not ourselves. Now I came across this little paragraph, and I can't. I didn't even write down which one I took it out of, and I and I can look it up. But I I, I want to read this to you because I just thought it was so powerful about getting our eyes off ourselves and praying for others, looking at others, praying for others, praying for the saints, the spirituality. Of health, uh, the spirit. Excuse me. The spiritually healthy person is devoted to the welfare of others, especially fellow believers. 
On the other hand, the root of both psychological and spiritual sickness is preoccupation with self. Ironically, the believer who is consumed with his own problems, even his own spiritual problems, to the exclusion of concern for other believers, suffers from a destructive self-centeredness that not only is the cause of, but is the supreme barrier to the solution to his own problems. Whoa. Usually such selfishness isolates him or her from other believers who if they were intimately involved in fellowship with them would be regularly praying for his spiritual welfare. See, when we, come, when we come before the Lord and we don't make it about ourselves and we pray for Him and for others and His work in the body and, and people's lives, good things happen to us. When we look to ourselves, it, 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 it becomes, what's the word? Smothering. You can't, you, you can't get outside of it. Eventually it cripples you. And makes you ineffective in the things of God. But when we come with the right attitude, the attitude isn't about me. It's about the Lord and it's about other people, other believers. Praying at all times with perseverance for all the saints. Who are they? You guys. <laughs> Us. Praying for each other. Undergirding each other. Keeping each other before the Lord. See, if, if I know you have my back, I don't have to have my own all the time. And that's kind of the idea. I can put myself out and be there for you because I'm not looking out only for me. I've got other, I've got 20 others or 100 other ones looking out. You see how it works? And pretty soon you're pretty healthy, spiritually speaking. You become really healthy. An example of this is what Paul does in the rest of this, and we'll, we'll tie this up here. He says, and pray on my behalf. Well, there he is. He's being selfish. No, look what he says. Pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of what? The gospel. He's not asking anything for himself. What he's asking is that he would have the, the, the boldness and the opportunity to share the gospel. Not for him, but for other people to be saved, to come to Jesus Christ. So even in asking for himself, it's not really for himself at all. It's so that he can be used of God to reach other people with the saving message of Jesus Christ and people get saved. And people get strengthened. For which I am an ambassador in chains. He's saying I'm in prison here because of this gospel. But I still want to preach it. <laughs> I'm in chains. But I want to preach the gospel. I want to share the gospel. That in proclaiming it. I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Because that message shouldn't be hid under a bushel. It should be given out confidently. Without shame. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God and the salvation for the Jews and for the Greeks, for those who believe. That's what it is. And Paul, that's his whole heart. He's, he serves as, a, as an example. His prayer is for opportunity and boldness. And really, it really should make us think of how we ask for prayer, even for ourselves. Am I asking for myself just so my life's easier? or so that I can be used more effectively for Jesus Christ? Is that in the equation when I seek requests from you? That we ought to think that way. Back to the text here. We are in a war. The, this overall text we've been looking at in 10 through uh, 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 20 here, we're in a war. Uh, it's a spiritual war, and we have to fight it spiritually. And the way to fight that is by taking up the armor of the Lord and the attitude of the Lord that He's, he's set forth, and that is in an attitude of prayer, total dependency upon Him. 
if, if we're not willing to do that, we're not going to win. God's going to win. But if I choose to fight these battles in the flesh and not do it the way the Lord would have me do it and the way He prescribes, then I'm going on the casualty list. I'm not coming through that unscathed. And I may not anyway, but I will come through it whole in Him no matter what happens if I, if I approach it with the Lord and for the Lord. Prayer is the attitude that's required in taking up the armor of God and seeing it work. I ask you, are you praying? Are you in an attitude of prayer? Is that how you approach life? With a dependency upon God where you have open lines between you and Him. Rob Frazier, in, he's a, a contemporary Christian artist and he wrote in the 80's a song that just, just impacted me greatly. Uh, it, it was called, Doesn't Anyone Pray? in this town anymore. And it really tore me up because it was talking about a little town and how the town had changed and how things that were once uh, a church was turned into this and this was turned into that and, and things are, were, were changing. And, and things do change. But listen to the lyrics of this. He says, Doesn't anyone pray in this town anymore? And then he asks, Doesn't anyone Want to stand up for the Lord. See how standing in prayer? Right there. Doesn't anyone want to stand up for the Lord? Then he said, we shake our hands wondering what we're going to do. We're, we're frustrated with the way things are. And God says, I need one righteous man. I just need one. Start with one person. Committed to him who's willing to pray, willing to acknowledge their dependency upon God. And then it ends with, is it going to be you? Am I going to be that one that really understands I need to be, I need to be praying? I need to be in an attitude of prayer. And that's how I can stand firm and hold that ground God has entrusted to me. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. And I thank you for your precious word today. I thank you for the challenge that this text is to probably most all of us here. I know that some of the folks in our church are truly prayer warriors, and we've been blessed with prayer warriors throughout our history as a fellowship, and I'm thankful for every one of them. But I do pray that individually for us who are sitting here today that have heard this message, that we as believers would understand that we need to have an attitude of prayer that that should be our heart, a heart of dependency upon you. This ground you've given us is ours to hold. You've equipped us through this armor that you provide, but there's a right way to, to take it up. And I just pray that we would realize that we truly are dependent and we need to be people of prayer individually and we need to be a church of prayer as well. Bless each one today, Lord, for being out. I do pray they've been encouraged with what we've looked at in your word. I pray that as we uh, embrace this week ahead, that as Paul prayed, that you would give us boldness uh, to share the gospel, that there would be those opportunities uh, to share the gospel with the lost and dying around us. Bless our, our, our club meetings tonight, Lord, as they, uh, preparations will be going on uh, or this afternoon. And as we get together tonight, may we just uh, have a great time of uh, fellowship one with another. We just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.